Hey everyone, welcome back to Alf's Mustang Garage. Today we're back working on this 66 Mustang Fastback doing the six cylinder to a 289 conversion. Today's video, we're going to be assembling the front suspension. So we're gonna do upper control arms, lower control arms. Uh, we're gonna get our coil springs in, spring saddles, um, all those kinds of things and I think with this kind of car and what um, what this particular owner wants to do with this car, I think we're gonna start by doing the infamous uh, Shelby drop. That's where we drill the holes one inch down and an eighth inch back using a template. There's tons of information about this. Um, all you gotta do is Google, you know, 66 Mustang Shelby drop and this is a modification that was made by uh, you know, the Shelby Mustang cars uh, to enhance their performance. Um, essentially what you're doing without getting too crazy into it because there's just tons of information out there about this, but it's very simple. You're just lowering the center of gravity um, in order to make the car handle better, in particular going into a turn. Um, and that's pretty much like a huge benefit. All you're doing is just relocating that control arm down. So um, with that being said, let's jump right into it. Okay, so we're gonna go ahead and start with the uh, Shelby drop of the uh, upper control arm. So obviously you have your original holes here in place. Um, you're gonna need a template. I'm gonna post a link in the description for you. Uh, I think you should buy the Andy Cruz template. He has them on his website. The one I bought actually was not an Andy Cruz one, but I bought mine before he started making them. But I like to support, you know, local guys like that. So he's a cool dude. Um, okay, so what's gonna happen is um, you're gonna, you know, get a set of bolts to kind of like hold this in place from the original location and then you have two little pilot holes that are gonna go down one inch and it's actually like back like an eighth of an inch as well. But as long as you just bolt these up um, and then you have two little pilot holes that we're gonna drill. Okay, we got those snugged up with nuts on the back side, and we're just gonna drill a small little pilot hole here. What size is this drill bit? Eighth inch. Eighth inch, thank you, cameraman, AKA Justin. <laughs> okay, so we're just going to drill that pile of hole right here. Okay, so pro tip, a couple of things. Um, make sure you get some good drill bits. Like you're, you're kind of drilling through a couple layers of metal here. Okay, and another pro tip is kind of, kind of make your mark on there. But if you just kind of keep drilling with the template on, you can kind of wallow out the hole of your template and then you got to get a new template. So kind of make you know, a, a drill impression enough to where you can take the template off and then continue on to finish your holes off. Okay, so I talked about using a, a really high quality drill bit. Um, we use these Tempest drill bits by Cornwell and they actually are stepped. Like these are freaking awesome, okay? Um, but if you just kind of use a standard drill bit, like you can't just like throw this in your pilot hole and expect that to work. You're gonna have to like keep using bigger and bigger bits until you get up to the half inch size that you need. So, um, but these things cut amazing and you know, Cornwall warranties those out if you happen to accidentally break one. <laughs> so get yourself some quality drill bits. If you own a classic Mustang, you're gonna use them. Okay, all right. So with this type of bit where it's already stepped, we're just gonna go right in there and go for it. See what I mean by it? that's pretty thick when you drill through there? Yet again, get a quality drill bit. Okay, there she is. Holy moly. Don't forget to clean out all your metal. Well, yahoo. 
Okay, so when assembling, now that you've drilled your holes here, uh, you know, whether you drill the holes or, or you don't drill the holes, you're, you know, essentially you're ready for assembly. Uh, the first thing I do is I put the coil spring up in there because there's like nothing in your way. If you just go ahead and bolt your control arm in the way, like it's doable, but like you still have to get this whole spring up in there. So I'm gonna put the spring up inside there, get it compressed, and then put in the upper control arm. So the only tool that I use for compressing springs is this tool right here. There will be a link in the description. You can buy these from National Parts Depot. There's your number. So what we're gonna do, that what this does is, is it mounts in as if it's a shock absorber. So it's gonna mount in the shock absorber location on the spring saddle. Um, let's talk about the spring. Um, I buy my springs from Eaton Detroit Springs. This is like the exact correct spring rate for a 66 Mustang fastback with a 289 GT. Okay, so um, I, I like to spend the extra money to get uh, a higher quality part. So they mark the uppers, you know, with some paint, but um, it, it'll be kind of obvious, like it's kind of more flat on the top and more kind of open here on the bottom. So the tool will come in through the top, okay? And you got your saddle, this little tab right here is gonna go right there. I do have other videos on this that we did one on a 67 Cougar, but that's kind of how the spring locates. Um, these little saddles kind of have their own little rubber insulators that go on like that. Okay, so it's like a thousand times easier to set this up if you just put your spring saddle on your tool first. This is like a simulation of like where your shock absorber would be if you're familiar with how those go. Okay, we'll just get those. Uh, we'll come back through and snug those up with a wrench and that's kind of like how that goes. And then you can install it through the bottom here and kind of get it lined up in the position because the end of that coil spring is gonna hit that tab. And then you got a coil resting on this uh, isolator and this isolator here. Okay, I almost forgot, before you feed this up and through, you have a little isolator here up on the top. So don't forget to get yourself a new piece of rubber up in there. And it sits kind of like that. There's a little notch right there for the very end of it. It just kind of sits there. That way it's nice and protected up there in the shock tower. Okay, so in preparation up here on top, so you need your uh, your shock, your upper shock mount. And on, on these um, 65 and 6 cars, like the, they have like a, it's like a carriage bolt style. Well, they don't exactly hold themselves up in place uh, without a coil spring. So uh, what you do, is you kind of get one of these started in your upper shock mount and you just kind of like feed it through kind of like that and then you can get the remaining two and kind of just feed them up through the bottom i can do this and talk at the same time there we go and now you can get a nut on it right there Same thing with the third one. Okay, we'll snug those up with the socket and then you're ready to go. Okay, before you feed that up in there, let's bolt your retainer plate down in. So, just with your you know, upper shock bolts like that.
Okay. Okay, so now you can like install this up into place. Uh, keep in mind the end of the spring is gonna face into the shock tower. So just like that. When you get this before you start compressing, make sure that the upper piece of the shock tower will like accept this rubber isolator. Make sure it doesn't like roll on you, you know, like it's gonna roll if it's not going in there perfect. So um, it's nice to have the covers off, kind of like how we have here. So, and this is what I'm talking about. Like you want your rubber isolator to go around your upper shock support right there. So um, we're gonna feed this up and through. Um, just like that. Okay, so now from here, you just need to get your setup here. So it's gonna go your bearing, your washer, and the nut. Okay, so now that it's in there, you've verified that the upper uh, rubber isolator has been accepted and didn't roll on you. Um, you've got your saddle positioned correctly down in here. So you can kind of make your, you know, final little adjustments just like that. And now you're, you're ready to compress. So I'm just gonna snug these little guys up here. Okay, this is a big one and a quarter inch nut, and we're just gonna start compressing it, and essentially it's just gonna pull that spring saddle up into place as you do this. Okay, one thing to kind of note as you kind of turn this, um, you kind of want to like hold this in place because it, it's gonna want to rotate on you. Um, especially with the new rubber ice layer. So just kind of like keep a hand down on it here and compress that spring and it should be good. Going okay? Yes, it is. Is it like, can you feel resistance against you or? No. Uh, pause one second though. I gotta reposition my hand before my knuckles get stuck. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Now you're good to continue. Okay, so it's compressed. We're gonna leave the tool on there because eventually we have to decompress it. So, but it's compressed enough uh, to where it's out of the way of the control arm. And now you can get the control arm in place. So, a couple things. Um, we're using a Scott Drake control arm. It's like a concourse correct deal. That's why you have the two-tone paint. That's how they did it from the factory. Um, I like to put in the 90 degree grease fittings now because it's gonna be much harder to do that after the fact. Um, alignment. Let's talk about alignment, okay? Um, I don't know what it's gonna be yet because we completely changed everything, okay? Um, so I'm just gonna throw some in to get a baseline because I know from experience, past experience, if I install this with absolutely zero shims, um, you're gonna have a pretty extreme negative camber, okay? So this is gonna get fine-tuned later at the alignment shop. But for now, I'm just gonna throw in um, I got two sixteenth, one one sixteenth inch shims and one one eighth. Okay, so essentially I'm just throwing in a quarter inch on each side, just so it kind of like will stand the wheel up straight, uh, straight ish, and then we'll get her dialed in later. Um, I like to electrical tape my shims so they don't like fall out when I'm using multiple shims, um, and that way it makes a little easier for my alignment guy because he can kind of like just take it out, unwrap it, take one out and kind of do his thing. So, okay. So this thing is ready to install and then here's our mounting nuts uh, for the engine bay side. With our shims in place, we can go ahead and install 
we can go ahead and install the control arm into its new mounting location. Okay, and then, yeah, it just makes the control arm installed just that much easier once the coil spring is already up in there. And now you don't have to like fight a control arm in your way if you're gonna do the spring second. So spring first, control arm second. Let's go on the other side and put these nuts in. Okay, we'll just cinch those down tight with a three quarter inch socket. Okay, so you got your upper control arm in. So now you can like uh, decompress your coil spring and mount that in there, right? Or, as soon as you do that, it's just gonna push this thing down and it's gonna be difficult to get your spindle in. So, leave that compressed. You can move this very easily. Which brings me to another point. Before you install this, you're gonna want to grease it. Don't grease it, okay? Because it's gonna create a, like a hydraulic effect and make this more difficult to pivot, okay? Grease it afterwards, it'll be just fine. So now I can move it very nice. Okay, so. I'm going to push that out of the way for now, and we're going to get a lower control arm in. So, 65 and 6 cars, um, they're just bolts. They switched to uh, an eccentric bolt for alignment adjustment in 67. So, that's going to go in. leave that finger tight for now and then we'll go back through and, and torque that later okay so when converting we're talking about uh, the whole conversion process because that's kind of like the point of these whole uh, series of videos um, you do need different spindles okay the the bearing that 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 goes on here is going to be larger okay so these are the v8 spindles um, you can spend time to try and find some originals, maybe on eBay. Um, Scott Drake does make uh, a really nice um, replacement for this. Um, I feel like they do a pretty good job on them, um, but there are replacement V8 spindles available. So they come just like how you see here. It's all powder coated and everything ready to install. So, you gotta take these little plastic pieces off first. So one last thing before you just set this in place, um, you're going to want to plan ahead because uh, once you install the spindle, you're going to have a castle nut. And when you have a castle nut, you're going to put a cotter pin through it. You want to like adjust these now so you're not putting a cotter pin in this way. If you put a cotter pin in straight, it's a little difficult when it's like straight into the spindle, if that makes sense. So you can put a dowel in here right now and you can rotate it like this. That way it's a lot easier to work a cotter pin in there. Spindle goes up and in. Castle net gets started. Lower control arm in. There we go. Okay, so now and just tighten these up.
eventually you're gonna kind of, you know, maybe tighten these to a point to where it starts spinning the ball joint. And if that's the case, like we may need to put some pressure on it, like putting the spring down in and, and getting it kind of loaded. Okay, so when you put these on, like you don't have any spring or anything loading this suspension up, okay? So you're only going to get so far before it actually starts spinning the ball joint. And you don't want to do that because you want to kind of maintain the placement of that hole for your cotter pin. So what you're going to do is just kind of finger tight it as far as you can go and then just leave it alone. Okay, and then we're gonna to wanna to put the spring into it and kind of load this suspension up. Um, and then we can tighten everything down, torque it, cotter pin it. Okay, so we're gonna like lower or decompress the spring and get it into the upper control arm. Now, something to note, this is all aftermarket stuff, okay? When you decompress this spring, it's not just gonna perfectly go into the holes. You're gonna to need to like kind of pull on it a little bit, flex it, and just kind of like get it to line up. So it's not gonna be as easy as just decompressing it and let the hole, let the bolts go in the hole, okay? Okay, so, um, rather than like decompressing the spring, it's usually a little easier to kind of just raise your whole assembly like this, you know? So what we're gonna do is just try to Sometimes it's helpful to have a little third hand in there. Okay. Can you get one bolt started? Mm, not yet. Are they lined up in the holes? They're really close. Keep pressure up on it. Sometimes you gotta use a little bit of persuasion. Okay, so after you tighten up your, your lower uh, saddle nuts there in the bottom of the control arm, you can now like decompress the spring. I'm not gonna decompress it all the way because I'm gonna leave that tool on there um, just to kind of keep the load off um, or not like completely like push the whole assembly downward um, and then I'm gonna move on to assembling the brake system Okay, so now that I kind of have decompressed the spring a little bit and I kind of have you know, a little bit of tension You know, I can kind of put a little bit of tension on here as I um, tighten down this castle nut and then it's not going to spin your ball joint. I'm not going to film using the torque wrench and tor torquing everything down, but I can tell you the specifications. So your ball joints are going to be 60 to 90. Generally, I kind of just find a happy medium and go in the middle. Your upper control arm is going to be 70 to, what was that one, 105? Upper control arm, 75 to 100 foot-pounds, okay? And then your lower control arm is 75 to 100 foot-pounds of torque on that uh, bolt right there. So, so there's your kind of general torque specs. Um, once everything's torqued. You can cotter pin these guys here and referring back to, you know, putting a cotter pin in this way. No, it goes in that way. There we go. And get one for the lower. Kind of like that. Um, so the only thing as far as the suspension wise on this is um, the shock absorber. 
Now I'm not gonna put that in yet because I'm gonna kind of build everything here and um, and I'm just like, no, I'm not, re not ready to take the coil spring compression tool out. So I'm gonna leave that in there temporarily for now as we kind of like build up the brake system and the steering system on here. So, um, and I'm not gonna do, I'm not gonna film the other side. Um, it's, you know, obviously the, the same procedure for both sides. So this here would conclude um, assembling your upper and lower control arms, doing the Shelby drop, uh, installing the, the coil spring, um, all that for your, uh, at least your front suspension minus the, the shock absorber. So anyways, if you found the video to be helpful, give us a thumbs up. Those little things do go a long way when it comes to helping us to create more videos, which are hopefully helpful for you guys. Um, and if you wanna follow us along, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. Those things do help us as well. And we'll catch you on the next go around.